All right, you guys, this is Scotty by Nature TV, and I have a special guest with me, and that is... JB says what? And I'm young, fresh, and new. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Josiah, who makes all of my theme music. Shout out to him. But anyway, um, this is Young, Fresh, and New. This is the second episode of Young, Fresh, and New. Two, as a matter of fact. And we have JV Says What up here with me today. Okay. Now, I have, I've been, you know, this is, this whole collab is like months late. It was supposed to have been happening a long damn time ago. <laughs> but, you know, we here better late than never, as Riley Burris would say. So the whole purpose of Young Fresh You Knew, if you guys have never seen it before, is where I put the spotlight on up and coming YouTubers. And it doesn't matter how long you've been doing YouTube. Sometimes people can be doing YouTube for 10 years and people still don't know who they are. So to me, that's still young, fresh and new to me. If I didn't know who you was years ago and I'm just now finding out about you and I feel like you deserve all the spotlight that you deserve, then I'm going to give you that platform to do so. So that's what this is all about. So um, I want to start off by asking you for those that may not, that, that are not really familiar with you, um, where are you from, first of all? So I am from a small city in Texas named Tyler. So you guys know two people from my hometown from the Chasing Reality uh, franchise. Y'all know y'all know him as King Kane, but I mm -hmm. know him as Cedric. Mm -hmm. And then y'all know D Hawkins. I know him as Damien from um, Chasing LA, but I currently live in Dallas. Okay, so you had to get out to small town, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I hate small town. Ugh. Oh, that's why I'm trying to that's why I'm trying to get the fuck right now. Um, so um with that being said, what got you started into YouTube? Like what made you want to start a YouTube channel? Like it like this is like a two-part question. Like it was there people, was there certain YouTubers that you watched that inspired you to say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna start my own YouTube channel? Because I know for me when I started. I used to watch the Scorpion Show, um, Sweet Editions TV, um, Brian B, um, even watch Cadillac Kimberly. And it was really her video on Eddie Long where I said, oh, bitch, I'm finna do this. So, <laughs> you know, that's where that came from. So were there any inspirations that you watched before you started that made you want to do it? And what also, besides the inspirations, made you want to do YouTube? So it's not like I had any inspirations to want to do it. I'll be honest with you. So I wanted to do YouTube back in 2009 or so. That's how old my channel is. Oh, wow. My channel is, my, I've created this channel in 2009 when I was in college. And it was just me watching, you know, um, music videos at the time. But really and truly what sparked me to want to do YouTube was back. <laughs> it was back when Bad Girls Club was on television. And I wanted to go in all the time on Natalie Nunn because, it, you know, every season she would find whatever the it girl was and she would want to pick an issue with them, like Char from season six, uh -huh. Judy season six. I just always felt like, you know, let me get on here and talk about it. But I had some insecurities at the time because I had teeth issues with my teeth. I had a big gap and I was like, I don't want to get on here and people be clowning me, you know, be like, you're talking about Natalie, but then look at you. So uh -huh. I didn't do it that, at that time. And then... What really made me want to do it is watching, you know, I love Ashley, love rocks. And back in that day, I was watching you as well because I found you through Ashley. And the person who really kind of inspired me to want to do this was um, Wesley from A Connection TV. Love when Wesley. To, when he used to do Mona Simone. Yes. I used to love that. I used to love that. And then um, Nina, um, much love from Kentucky. Like, those are my people to watch back in the day. And so classic YouTube. <laughs> so really what got me into it was reaching out to Roxanne and Ashley and asking them, like, you know, what does it take to do this? And they were just like, you know, turn your camera on and just go. And that's really where, you know, we've been going since then. OK, so you said something in your answer that resonated with me when you said you had insecurities because you mm -hmm. had teeth issues and that's why you didn't want to come on screen. Well, I'm a person that had them as well. I when I first uh, I, I wouldn't say when I first started, it's like as I continued um, 
I, to this day, I still don't know what happened, but they mm. started to deteriorate at the top of my mouth. They started to deteriorate and it was to the point to where I wasn't comfortable with it. And then, you know, it didn't really help that um, other people would pick it apart when they watch your video and they don't mm. like what you say. So I would say that that prompted me to go and do what I wanted to do and just go and get them done. I ain't go to Columbia and get no big ass veneers put in my mouth. <laughs> My damn dentist and got them done, honey. Okay. And yeah, I'm watching you. That helped me too. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because really what helped me. Yeah, because like I'm still I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. Um, and also with this um segment of young fresh and new, I always try to give advice to those that's doing it and that's you know, because how long you been doing it. So like, I've been doing this for now. I'm in my sixth year of doing YouTube. Okay. That's still fairly new in my opinion. So um, this is a, like, in addition to me asking you questions, I'm also giving you my opinion, not really mm -hmm. opinion, but giving you advice or whatever, because that's just what I do. I've always done that since I've been around. So um, I will say that um, th sometimes when you do YouTube, you, well, not sometimes. Once you do YouTube, you are you are opening yourself up to scrutiny. You're opening up yourself to opinions that you probably don't even want to hear. Mm -hmm. And you're opening up yourself to be a semi-public figure in a sense. So a lot of times we do get shit that we probably feel that we don't deserve. But in a sense, I'm just looking at it now like, okay... I sit here on my soapbox and I talk shit about everybody else, mm -hmm. you know? So if I can sit there and do that, then I can deal with what people got to say mm -hmm. about me. At first, I'm still learning how to do that because there are times where I've seen stuff and now I'm starting to not look at it because I used to look at certain things just to see, okay, now what do people think about my videos? What are their crit critiques about my videos? What do I need to change? What is the... Uh, you know, constructive criticism. Sometimes I look at it and it wouldn't even be constructive criticism in my opinion. They just finding a reason to just to dislike me or just finding a reason just to hate on me. Like that's just how it will come across. So now and I'm at a place where and I would address it on my videos or I would address <laughs> it on my Twitter or I would address it on my community where I would have slick sub or something. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like it's really no need to do that. Because right. when you do that, you ain't doing it but fueling them up. Like, they, they, you know, never react a way that they want you to because they think they did something once you do that. So that's the mindset that I have. Um, has there been any instances since you've been doing this where you gotten crazy comments from people? Mm -hmm. Quite a few. <laughs> Quite a few. I've, You know, with the house, since I do housewives, you know, some of those things are that is crazy and they love to pick everything apart if mm -hmm. you don't like such and such oh you just hate them i don't know that person right regional exactly and when i first started like i was reviewing everything like on vh1 and all that stuff and i had somebody come in my comments and leave the nastiest comment about me had nothing to do with the video they said nobody wants to watch your gay ass i was like well obviously you did so <laughs> So, must not be nothing wrong with me because you watched. Yeah, th that's the thing that you also have to realize is that no matter what they say, they're still gonna watch. Mm -hmm. Like they're still gonna tune in. Like there's some people that watch you just to complain. Yeah. Like they 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 literally just watch just to complain. And, and I've sometimes, gotten huh? I've gotten used to that now, especially mm -hmm. with Housewives of Atlanta, Potomac. And now me doing Jersey, those crazy people just come and I just, you know, I just hit the thumbs up, you know, thumbs up on them and hit a heart button and say, thank you for watching and giving me the money. That's the way to look at it, too. And now I'm doing now mm -hmm. I just delete the comments mm -hmm. sometimes because I can deal with disagreeing. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But when you start going way too far. I say, okay, let me just delete it and shit like that because I don't really be having time to respond to everybody. Mm -hmm. But I also know how it looks when 
there's a bunch of there's tons of love coming down my comment section but then there's that one comment that just throws me the fuck off mm -hmm. and now i gotta unleash on your ass right. so you know now i feel like this i'm not i'm not gonna keep doing it like i i'm just going to let it be because at the end of the day everybody that's the thing that i also had to understand everybody's not gonna like you right I don't know if you had the same mindset as me, but when I first started YouTube, I just knew I just wanted everybody to like me. And I just knew everybody would because in my real life, everybody does. So I just knew I would be well liked on here. But for the most part, I feel like I am. But of course, you are going to have some people that don't. And that's fine. With YouTube, I knew because in my personal life, I have people who 100% love me, but then there are people who just don't like me for no reason. And I'm like, that's your loss. So I knew coming into YouTube that there would be those people who would gravitate towards me, fall in love with my personality. And then there would be people who just didn't like me for God knows what reason. So I knew that coming into it. And not to mention people come up with their own, um, their own, what's the word I'm looking for? They come up with their own thoughts about you based off of a 30 minute video. Like they mm -hmm. think they know you because they watch you for 15 to 30 minutes. Like I remember reading a comment one time saying, um, I think it was, it was very recent. I think we were out with rocks. I was out with rocks and Bundy that weekend. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone saying, I can't imagine going out and having a gathering with both of them because Scotty is a lot. Scotty is a lot. And I'm just like, how would you know that? Because of, because of what you see on here? Mm -hmm. Like, if you ask Josiah, who is a person that hangs out with me the most out of everybody that you see me with, it's probably, I would say, well, no, 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 no. Jamar hangs out with me the most. I mean, not, let me do that. Jamar, then Josiah, then Janie, then Aaron. Ask them four. And they will tell you, I'm very laid back in person. Now, I still have my jokes. I'm still going to make you laugh. I'm still going to say all kinds of crazy stuff. But I'm really like a chilled out person mm -hmm. in person. But when but when they watch you on here and they think they, you know, because you're a little bit hype on here or you're a little bit passionate, they think you like that 24-7. People think that about me all the time. I'm like, y'all, I am really a quiet person. When, when, she, when you meet me, I am very quiet. Right. You know, so, but I also have to, you know, I had to realize that that's, that's just the, the, the part of what yeah. this is like that comes with being a YouTuber. People think they know you. And mm -hmm. I'd be like, now I see why celebrities be ready to pull their damn hair out their head when they see certain things or certain things like that. Because even with like, even now, um, as a YouTuber that's on the, you know, on the come up or whatever, there's when people see me on the picture with a man, they want to ask me a whole bunch of questions <laughs> like that. You, you know, okay. But they ask <laughs> all kinds of questions and I have to be like, I'm not answering that. You know, I mean, clearly you see him being posted. So clearly, you know, what's going on. So why are you asking me this? You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> even, even certain parts of your life have to be private now because you are now a public figure in a sense, but not really a public figure. You net famous now. So people are going to be invested in that part of your life too, even though you don't want them to be, which is, <laughs> you know, um, so with your channel, mm -hmm. what are the things you want to achieve with your channel as you continue to do it? Oh, that's a good question. What do I want to achieve? For me, the main thing that I would like is just growth so that because there are things that I want to do in my personal life. And, you know, because I have a job that's paying the bills, but I want to do personal things like. I'm looking to build a house within the next two to three years. So that's really what I want to just make this channel continue to grow, reach more people. People, everybody asks me to do in time, you know, say do interviews. I'm like, y'all, that is not my style. So yeah. maybe, maybe get into that. I don't know. But well, I will say this to you though, because everybody isn't an interview person. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like everybody doesn't want to do interviews. I mean, me personally, I can do interviews and I can be interviewed, which I have been. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, and I actually like interviews, honestly, you know, I like to be the, you know, be in control and answer the questions that I want to answer and skip past the motherfuckers. I don't want to answer. Like I enjoy that, but everybody's not with that. Like I know a lot of people, I think, I think it was Ashley that said that she wasn't like an interview person. Like rocks don't really like to do lives, you know, a lot of things. Yeah. A lot, like a lot of things that a lot of us be doing some of our favorite YouTubers, People want them to do it, but they really don't want to do it because that's not their style. Like Ashley never, I don't think Ashley has ever done a live before. Rox did a live one time on her own channel and she did a live over here with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had to beg her to do that because she does not do lives. So I, I yeah, feel, yeah. yeah, see what I'm saying? So it, so I always feel like this, make sure you do, when you do whatever you do with your channel, make sure you do the things that you know for a fact that fits you and that you want right. to do for yourself. Like you don't have to do what everybody else does. Like the, and that's, and that's the beauty of having your own platform. You can do it however you want to, you know, even with me, um, with me doing it for so long, there are certain things that I want to tap into now that I wasn't able to do what I felt like I wasn't able to do because I know that, well, I started with reality TV, so I got to mm -hmm. stay here. I don't want to be pigeonholed. Right. So I said, I keep the reality TV. I keep the blogs, even though half the time I don't even give a damn about what's going on in them. But I want to get into my music content because That's I music. love music. I love to talk about music. That's like a, passion of mine like mm -hmm. i would rather talk about music related stuff than the bullshit with, that's going on with diddy every fucking day i would rather do that right. you know so it all it all goes back to what i just said make sure whatever you do make sure it's something that you want to do for yourself mm -hmm. that's yeah, the that's thing. thing i say yeah, I, you know, sometimes I have a fear of the, the FOMO, like with Love and Mary Chanceville. Like, I, if you, everybody knows that I've dropped that show completely, like, I refuse to touch it. Most people have. And watching everybody review it, I was like, oh, I'm like, am I missing out on the views? And then I have to say, no, you might be missing out on views, but I have a piece of sanity not having to deal with those crazy stands of a certain persons. Because <laughs> <laughs> those people when are. I get it. That is the reason why I initially dropped it at first. And I really wasn't going to review this show. Mm -hmm. Then I talked to Mims. Uh, Mims is another person that's a really yeah. good friend of mine. I hang out with a lot. He was like, why would you stop reviewing LAMH? I said, because like, I hate reviewing this show. Like, it's not fun to review. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't look forward to it. It's always drama. You know, and all that stuff with T having the most drama with people trying to take his page down and shit. Right. So it's kind of like, who who wants to deal with that? So I said, so he said, well, I understand what you mean, but you are a reality TV commentator at the end of the day. And LAMH is one of your biggest videos. Like, those, that's the video that's out. He said, when it comes down to your highest rated reviews, what is your highest rated? I said, he said, besides a LAMH, what's your highest rated? I said, Housewives of Atlanta and Housewives of Potomac. And I would say that Bell Collective is right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, so you do know. He said, what's your lowest um, rated review? I said, Love and Hip Hop, which used to be my highest rated mm -hmm. one. <laughs> no, man. Uh, hip Hop. Right. And then I said, and not only love and hip hop, I said, but basketball wives as well, which was also used to be my highest rated mm -hmm. video. So now, you know, I mainly rely on Housewives, mm -hmm. Atlanta and Potomac, Bill Collective, and then you got LAMH. So he said, well, right now there is no Housewives for you. You know, True. Potomac is not on. Atlanta ain't coming on for no uh, for, for a minute now. Mm -hmm. um, he said, you're reviewing Love and Hip Hop, but it ain't really, I said, it ain't doing shit. I'm lucky to get 1K, 1.5, it's about 2K on the video for that. Mm -hmm. And then I said, um, I tried to review Bold and Bougie, and it's just, <laughs> I ain't feeling it. Mm -hmm. So the only other thing I do have is LAMH. So he was mm -hmm. like, I say do it. Look at it as a business. Take your personal out of it. Take the emotion out of it. Just go in. If you got to go in every live tipsy, 
just to, just to have a good time, you go ahead and do that. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, because I don't like to go against what I already said I wasn't going to do, because then I'm going to look like I did it for attention. And I wasn't mm -hmm. saying, I literally wasn't saying that I wasn't going to review the show just to get some attention, because I don't need it. I don't really like attention anyway, so I don't really need it. Like, when people see me in person, I don't really like the attention. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, so what am I going to do? I said, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then T said, bitch, I'm going to go ahead and do it too. I ain't got nothing else to review. And then really B decided that she was going to do it too. So a lot of us kind of went back on it. But I just took it upon myself to be like, I'm going to be drunk every live. <laughs> That's the only way I'm going to get through it. And look, it went like, again, 11K, 8K, 6K. Like I'm like, these people hate me, but they watch, the, they Sitting here watching the review. So it's just like, you know, I took Mim's advice and here we are. But I really do feel like if Housewives was still on, I probably wouldn't have reviewed it. Okay. Being honest. So yeah. I'm just trying to think about I'm thinking about my chick and what's gonna keep it afloat, child. So <laughs> you know, but um let me see. It was something else I wanted. To. Okay, so what is some of the struggles you have as a YouTuber? What what would you say is one of your struggles? Right now, the biggest struggle is views. That's really okay. the biggest struggle right now. Other than that, nothing else. Because when I do my videos, I record them, edit them, put them up. But the biggest struggle, aside from if it's, if it's a show that I can't stand, it's a struggle watching some of them. Like mm -hmm. this previous season of Potomac. It was a struggle to watch those episodes and even put that video up. So I, I know. Horrible. Mm -hmm. Horrible. And I'm and when, I do, and when I do lives, I like them to at least be an hour with Potomac, 25, mm -hmm. 30 minutes. That's how you knew it was so bad. <laughs> That's how you knew it was. It was, bad. It was terrible. Well, what I would say is. Like I tell everybody that's coming up, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be saying this quite a bit throughout this entire um, this entire season of Young, Fresh, and New, is that as an upcoming YouTuber, I know a lot of the times we look at views and we look at people that we started with and, you know, we see how they're going. I'm going to give you a prime example. I started in 2010. I think October 27, 2010 was the first time I put up a video. Around that time, it was really only the Scorpion show. It was, you know, doing what we're doing. The mm -hmm. Scorpion show, Sweet Addictions TV. She was doing her thing, Much Love from KY. And then there was Cadillac Kimberly who will pop in and out doing what we're doing. We're doing the kind of content we're doing. Then when I came out, that's where the whole nother crop of people began to come out like rocks mm -hmm. ashley bondi jamar alexander rogers we all started literally around the same time james Cowell, sean bradley um who else could i think of from around from that time period um the king of Re well i ain't gonna say that i'm gonna say his other name justin because that's the person i know i don't know the king of Reeds. justin J. um Adrian Expressions. All of us started at the same time. We was a brand new group of people and we started at the same time. Mm -hmm. So with me starting with all of them and seeing how their channels grew and mine wasn't growing, it kind of, it can make you a little insecure and it can make you feel like there's something that you're not doing right. Because I, I'm not, because I've said it to them. Like, I remember sitting at the table um, about a couple of weeks ago with Bundy and Rox, and they was telling me how proud they was of me about how far I've come. And I said, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I used to look to y'all for inspiration because I started with y'all, and y'all took off, and I was just in the background. I said, me and Jamar was pretty much in the background while y'all was at the front. But now we can honestly say that we're in the front right along with you guys now. Like we're in a well, I could say I could say I am because Jamar is in a whole nother genre at this point. Like he's a part of web reality now and he's a producer on web reality now. So he's he's in a whole nother lane now. But as far as me, 
I can people when people say something about reviewers, they say my name, they mm-hmm. say body name, they say rock's name. Back then they didn't say my name. <laughs> like people were watching me, but they weren't saying my name like that. I used to feel completely slept on. And I would say that I had to take out some time to figure out what was the issue. And I knew what it was. I wasn't consistent. I allowed life to sometimes prevent me from doing what I needed to do as a content creator. And not to mention, I I did need to switch it up at some point. And when the pandemic happened, I was forced to do that because reality TV was pretty much non-existent for a Mm -hmm. while because COVID happened and when nobody filming nothing. So I was saying, what am I going to do? I wanted to do retro reviews and, you know, take, you know, pull out my DVDs and look at Flavor of Love all over again and review that. And I tried to, but I just wasn't feeling it. Like, I ain't want to watch that shit again. You know, (laughs) I was like, no, I don't know. Then I, then I got into the gossip thing and then I, I kept making videos about that shit. So I'm like, okay, this is helping me keep myself afloat until these shows come back. Mm -hmm. So I was forced to do that. And once I did it, it helped me. And I kept going and I kept, and I had this strategy where I know I got a full-time job, but I want to have a video out at least, at least one video every day. If, if not every day, at least five to six days out the week, they have something to watch. That's what it was. And then the panel thing that started. And then I, continuously started doing panel shows and stuff like i had to get a little had to tap into my creative side and start doing other things and that's what happened so i highly recommend as a person that was that the little engine the little engine that could Mm -hmm. i would say that the first nine years of me being on youtube was slow Mm -hmm. i remember actually saying it like I think when I hit 15K, Ashley said, you you need to have more than 15K, but I'm going to shut the hell up. But you're supposed to have way more than that. And I, and I agree, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I didn't see what they were seeing, but I knew I was doing my job. So why am I not getting what I need to? But, you know, it came. It came, you know, um, I've been doing it for 10 years. I mean, 14 years, but the last four years have been the best years for the platform. So I say that to tell you, don't focus too much on the numbers. The numbers will come long as you're consistent with your work and long as you continue to just be yourself because people don't want to watch no fake ass bitch. Mm -hmm. So, and they are knowing you're not being authentic. And I can be real and say that I've watched people and I'll be like, that is not who they are. This is fate. This is not mm-hmm. them. You know what I'm saying? So continue to do you. I would even um, suggest if you want to, you don't have to, but like with collaborations, because I know this ain't going to be the only one I do with you. So like if I ask, you know, because a lot of times I and I like to collaborate with YouTubers on a come up anyway. I prefer to do that because okay. there's people that I feel like haven't been seen yet and i feel like they mm-hmm. need to be seen so that's why i if you look at it my whether you like it or not panel most of those people were up and coming at the time that i asked them to do it the only one that wasn't was bondy when i first pulled when i first picked the people jamie was new still mm-hmm. Nisi was new still t was new still kind of josiah was also new Every, just about everybody was new except me Bundy and then later on Alex and Jay Lee. Right. They weren't new, but everybody else was pretty much on the come up. And I purposely did it that way. Okay. So I'm saying all that to 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 pour into you and to say, keep doing what you're doing. Please do not focus on the numbers. Just keep putting out your videos. And you already know this, but you already know if you need my advice or help on anything, if I can help, you do know that you can always reach out to me. But you have before, and I have given you my opinion before and all that other stuff. I ain't never too big to to not reach my hand out to nobody. And I appreciate that for sure. So, but just know this ain't this ain't the only time we're doing this. Okay, just know that. Right. But um before we go, though, 
Mm -hmm. What do you want people to know about your platform? Like, why should they watch JB Says What? My platform, I'm going to take from my girl, Misha. It's just when I come on my channel, I'm lighthearted. I'm shady. I just want to come over here, talk to my people, have a good time. You're going to come up to my reviews and you're going to leave laughing at something that I said. Now, although I don't find myself funny, I know a lot of people be in my comments just cracking up. So when you guys come over to my channel, we're going to have a good time. We're going to kiki and we're just going to keep it at that. So I am a lighthearted, shady person. <laughs> <laughs> well with that being said you guys that was jb says what be sure to subscribe to his platform i will be sure to put the link to his channel in the description box so you guys can find him and subscribe to him and show him all the love and the support that he definitely deserves thank you for coming on here with me i appreciate it and i will see you guys on the next one bye y'all